Yes, yes, people. Peter Horganer, aka Max Mayers, alongside Audio Tuts. Today, we're going to be showing you how to do the reverse reverb effect. And it can be used on any type of sound from instruments to vocals to synths to um, anything in sound design as well. It sounds especially good in sound design, especially for creating scary, um, haunting effects. And it sounds especially good on vocals as well. And today we're going to use it on vocal in a track. Um, I think it makes the transition a bit more interesting and smoother as well. Um, especially if you've got just a vocal that's coming out of nowhere and you've got the instrumental and then the vocal comes in and you want something to kind of bring the vocal in. I wouldn't use it on tracks like um, a folk or acoustic track. I'd use it more on hip hop or grime or electronic kind of music like dance and dubstep, etc. But that's just my opinion. And in music, anything goes. So let's have a listen to what we've got. <laughs> The lovely Georgie Chapel on the vocal there. Okay, so I'm going to get the first syllable. And you want to use the marquee tool. I like to have the marquee tool as my secondary tool. And you can get that by having selecting it up here. And then every time you press command, it comes up. Click hold all and drag it down. Then I'm going to put fades on it. So I always like to put fades on my audio files, especially when I'm cutting. To stop any unwanted clicks and pops. I'm going to put that over here. Um, I've got a compressor on this track. Let's just turn it off for now. I'm also high passing everything above a thousand hertz because I don't want it interfering with the other frequencies in the mix. So we're gonna, I've got two reverbs on this track. I'm gonna send a lot. I'm gonna send it all, basically, to the um, reverb. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. Okay, that sounds all right. Okay, let's hear it with a compressor on. Yeah, I think that makes the transient a bit flatter and brings it closer in the mix. Just make sure we've got it all in. And there's a bit of a click on that, so. We need to bring the fade back a bit or make the region a little bit smaller. That's better. Okay, so now we're going to bounce that uh, up here in the top right. Just wait for that to load. We've already got a version of that, but we're going to bounce it again anyway, just rename it. Okay, we can get rid of that now and we can import a new one. Um, you can import it by pressing Command Shift I. Okay, if you double click on that, it comes up in the sample editor and then you click on functions, reverse. The reason we bounced it rather than editing the copy is because logic is destructive to audio files in certain processes like reversing. So if we would have done it to the copy, it would have changed the original. So we had to make a new version. We're going to get rid of the actual sound source that the reverb come from. We're just going to get the tail of it. And we're going to move that up to the beginning of the chorus. I'll just show you what it sounds like with the actual um, original in there. As you can hear, it doesn't sound right. The transition isn't smooth. And we're compressing it twice there, which we shouldn't be. That's what it sounds like, turd. Let's put the fades in again. Move it up. Put a fade in there as well. I want to move tonight. Move tonight. That sounds all right. Let's hear it all together. I 
think that sounds pretty cool. Okay, so I've been Peter Hogan, aka Max Mayers. Thanks for watching my tutorial. See you soon.